Looking to improve your game? You can now sign up for CFB Pro using the promo code LVD, get access to articles and deck guides by the world's best. So the website for those interested is draftsim.com. You can do sealed and draft simulations. So this is our pool. Uh, let's have a look. Is there a way to sort by rares? There is. So we got Haunting Voyage as our mythic. Tibal's Trickery, Warmaster, Pathway, God of Winter, and Waking the Trolls. So, Trickery, not particularly playable. Uh, Voyage, kind of depends. But uh, yeah, Red-Green, maybe some sort of splash for the back half of God of Winter could be interesting. So, let's take a look at the Uncommons. I guess we'll maybe sort by Rare. Or by color, I mean. All right, so color, start with white. I guess first a quick glance at our snowlands. We've got a plains, swamp, forests, uh, highland forest, red green, double chasm, black green. So the mana base for like a junt deck could actually be pretty strong since we also have the pathway and a slumber mound as a mana sink. So purely based on the rares and the lands, some sort of junt deck could be interesting. But we'll take a look at the cards. So white, Raptor, Triple, Revitalize, Story Seeker, Sword, Bounding Gold, Invoke, Onslaught, Braggart, Guardian, Shepherd. So white's not particularly exciting. Could maybe splash like a Bounding Gold or a Valkyrie. I guess Valkyrie Sword is double white to make the token, so it's not really splashable. Uh, Shepherd, I guess you could technically splash. So we'll see. Uh, blue, a null, probably pretty bad. Intruder, Disdainful Stroke is a card that goes up in value, typically in sealed, because uh, higher converted mana costs on average. So I've got four Disdainful Strokes. Next up, Harbinger, Mists, Hawk, Thief, Mistwalker, Raven Form, Double Augury, Raven Behold. So blue isn't bad, we've got some flyers. To close out the game, a couple of disdainful strokes. And a behold the multiverse. Then black. Way down helm is pretty nice. Couple of faithfuls, pursuit. Pursuit could be kind of an okay win condition in a slower sealed format. Feed the serpent times two is nice. Double return and a voyage, so a lot of ways to return creatures, but no real valuable creatures to return. So black is like okay with double feed. The helm is pretty exciting. But um, yeah, a lot of return creature stuff, but we'll have to pair those with good creatures, which maybe green has to offer, we'll see. Although <laughs> in the corner of my eye, I spotted four copies of Broken Wings to go with our four disdainful strokes, so uh, that's not great. So red, we've got Raider, Runamok, Trickery, Dwarven Hammer, another nice equipment. These are especially nice for sealed. Firewalker times two, double provoke, double haggy mob, double squash. Alright. Doomscar Titan Giant. So red's decent. And then green. Got the Warmaster, Vandal, always great, especially in sealed. Easy main deck. Path. Don't know if we'll have the fixing for Path, but it's worth considering. Couple snow creatures, which sadly in sealed are pretty bad, because you only have so many snow lands, although that being said, we do actually have a lot of green dual lands, so these are actually going to be above average. Four Broken Wings, Recluse, Seeker, Revenge, Packmate, and Lindworm. So green's not bad, ignoring the four Broken Wings. There's some good stuff in there. And then double gold vein pick, pretender, ruined crown, effigy. Uh, yeah, there's some considerations, although I don't think we have any runes to go with the ruined crown. So let's take a look at the multicolor stuff. We've got Forge Master, Tyrite Sword, God of Winter, Moritz, Waking the Trolls. 
So God of Winter, if we can play the back half, which we can't see here, uh, could be interesting, but that requires blue and black mana. So that might be a little tricky, since the fixing would mainly be from the two copies of Goldfane pick. But Waking the Trolls should be pretty strong as a finisher. So yeah, no runes to go with the Runed Crown. The mana base lends itself to some sort of Junt deck. Both red and green seemed playable, had some good cards. And then black, we can maybe splash. I guess splashing Feed the Serpent is going to be tough. So it might be like a pretty even split of the three colors, which normally would be a bad idea, but with four mana fixers could actually be feasible. So yeah, white, I think we can discard. Blue had some okay stuff. Uh, blue would also allow us to potentially play the author half of God of Winter. And it's mainly for the flying creatures and the Behold and Multiverse. And couple strokes maybe. So let's add the playable stuff in Junt to the deck and then it's going to be a little easier to take a look at. Priest of the Haunted Edge could actually make the cut here since we have a few Snowlands in our colors. Raise a Draugr, not sure yet. Wither Crown, I'm not sure yet. I'm just adding all the like somewhat playable stuff here. And then we'll have to evaluate. I uh, don't think Path of the World Tree is going to get the job done in this deck, I'm afraid. Sculptor. Recluse, if we need filler. Don't think Revenge is going to be great. Picks, maybe. Pretender, maybe. And then we've got all these sweet lanes. God of Winter, Waking the Trolls. So this is kind of what we're working with. Swap, there we go. So this is the actual deck. And now we can sort by mana cost. All right, so this is 35 cards, including the lands. I guess I didn't take a look at red yet. Let's add the red cards real quick. Uh, so as we mentioned, red might be like an equal split of black and green in this deck, thanks to the good fixing. Titan Giants. Maybe run amok, but I doubt it. All right, so 48 cards, including a lot of snow lands, which is good for all the snow synergies. So we've got five snow lands, which is kind of the strength of the sealed pool, I think. The fact that the snow lands are concentrated in one color, that's not always going to be the case. So the Snow Synergies, Boreal Outrider, Priest of Haunted Edge, Sculptor Winter, and God of Winter are all pretty decent. So typically what I like to do is kind of put my interaction in a separate pile, although I don't know if we can do that here. Yeah, maybe next time I'll have to use a different website for the deck builder. MTGA Draft website might have sealed as well, and I think we can sort a little bit better. So taking a look at our creature types for Haunting Voyage, because this could be a nice late game card in the deck if we have the appropriate creature types. And it looks like we've got a few giants that are potential candidates. Hagimob, sadly, Berserker, not giants. Return Upon the Tide doesn't seem particularly exciting without many elves. So those can probably go. Um, provoke the Trolls, fine removal, and we have a few ways to potentially leverage the plus five plus so side of it. Feed the Serpent looks good. I don't think we're going to need Dog Pursuit since we have some actual win conditions here. The Grim Draugr also looks good with all the snow lands. Probably don't need Comas Faithful, although it does synergize with those two copies of Return Upon the Tide. So there is definitely something to be said for like a double return, double Comas Faithful package. And then make it some sort of reanimator deck. The issue being we don't have that many expensive creatures to reanimate. 
So I doubt that's going to be worth it. Although the lifelink can also be nice with the equipment. So Recluse might not be necessary. And then Pretender, I don't think we'll have enough overlapping creature types. Um, how good is Warmaster? How many elves do we have? Even if we have just one other elf, it's probably fine playing it. But ideally we would have a few more. So we've got Vandal, Shapeshifter, Sculptor is another elf. This is an elf. So I've got a few. Seems playable. I don't think this is a run amok deck. The game plan of this deck is to kind of get to the mid to late game. We've got some good removal spells, double feed the serpent, double squash, double provoke, and then kind of go over the top with some of our more expensive creatures. So it's not a deck that's turning sideways and using run amok as a combo trick. Raider could be cuttable. Uh, Snakeskin Veil, I kind of like with the expensive creatures, although having the mana to keep up Veil at the same time might be tricky. And then the question is, are we going to play these two picks? I don't have that many cheap creatures to enchant, so I don't think this is going to be a Goldfain pick deck. And we already have Dwarven Hammer and Draugr's Helm, which are essentially both 5 drops in this deck. So I think pick can go. And we're starting to narrow down the list a little bit. How good is Wither Crown? Given that our game plan is to eventually take over with these expensive creatures, it's not the worst. Uh, it's a little awkward if the opponent can just chum block our Lindworm, for instance, and gain 6 life, essentially. In those circumstances, it's a little bad. Although... Yeah. Could still be worth it. People might also be main decking more disenchant effects, making cards like Wither Crown worse. So, could take it or leave it. So the mana in this deck, ideally we would have two primary colors and a splash color, but it looks like things are pretty evenly spread. But again, we do have a little bit of mana fixing to back it up. Although I still would prefer to have two main colors and a splash. So if we had two primary colors and a splash in this deck, what would it be? Kind of looks like black, green, splash, red to an extent. Because the early game's mostly black, green. And we don't need double red for anything, except the uh, super expensive cards. So that's kind of my first instinct. Uh, in which case, a card like Immerstrom Raider also goes down in value for not going to have red mana early. Still have the two Firewalkers, which might get cut here if we're going to be splashing the red for the most part. How good is Squash? It is good with Changelings. So there's something to be said for the Bloodline Pretender, which is in the deck. Although it's quite good with Masked Vandal for sure. And then how many more Giants do we have? Cinderheart Giant eventually waking the Troll. I guess it's just a Troll Warrior, not a Giant. So never mind. Doomscar Titans, a Giant. So not a ton of overlapping Giants. Although Squash is probably still playable at 5 mana to an extent. We do seem to have a small package of Berserkers with double Firewalker, double Haggy Mob. Do we have any other Berserkers? I guess that's about it. Uh, the Grim Draugr is a Berserker. So I'm considering whether or not uh, Race the Draugr or Haunting Voyage are going to make the final cut here. Yeah, I, I don't think they do. Got a couple elves, but not that many. I guess how many humans do we have? Shapeshifter counts. Two humans. These are... this is a human. Yeah, I guess humans just worse than... 
some of the other creature types. So I'm not loving the Raise the Draugr, although typically this type of effect is something you want to look out for in Sealed. Slow, grindy, two for ones. And then Haunting Voyage. Also doesn't seem particularly exciting. So currently 35 cards, including 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 lands. So this is 28 cards main deck, assuming 17 lands, I would need to make 5 more cuts. Can take another look at the blue cards too if we want, but again the mana base is pulling us pretty strongly into Jund. Oh, this is a Berserker too. Alright, maybe, maybe Haunting Voyage is worth it. Because there is a potential of potentially uh, foretelling it for 7 and getting more than 2 creatures back. Although for 6 mana getting 2 creatures on the battlefield might be better than raise the Draugr, which is kind of slow if we need to actually cast the Berserkers after. Yeah, Helm also makes a Berserker, but it's not very helpful with Haunting Voyage. So, yeah, I, I guess I'm on board with Haunting Voyage, and then we want to keep as many Berserkers as possible, which means we still need to make uh, six cuts. Could see cutting the Snakeskin Veil if our plan is to reanimate our big creatures, so we don't mind as much if they get killed. Freeze seems good. I think I'm cutting the Wither Crown, because we should have enough removal between Priest early on, Way Down maybe, and then... Of course, double feed the serpent, double provoke, double squash. There's no lack of expensive removal in this deck. And then if we were playing sideboarded games, we could bring in Wither Crown against like a very aggressive deck where we just need cheap interaction. Uh, we could play Immerstorm Raider because it's also Berserker. So that's a maybe. All right, so let's make some more cuts. Provoke the Trolls is probably one of our weaker removal spells compared to Feed the Serpent and Squash. Even though we don't have that many Giants, the mana discount is still pretty huge whenever it comes up. And uh, 6 damage, a bit more impactful than 3. So could maybe shave 1 Provoke. Still need to make a couple of cuts, so again we've got... Four, five, six, seven lands. So that means four more cuts. Looking at the top ends, I like most of it. So I wouldn't necessarily want to cut too much. This could also be an 18 land deck for what it's worth, because we've got a lot of expensive cards. Yeah, I kind of like everything that's going on here. So it's tough to make these next couple cuts. Guess we could shave one of these removal spells between Feed the Serpent, Provoke, and Squash. Which would probably be another Provoke. Keep Double Squash, Double Feed. So Dwarven Hammer and Helm we kind of have to remember are kind of like 5 drops in this deck. But I do want to keep Haggy Mob to go with our Haunting Voyage if possible. Although it's possible we just cut Voyage and shave a Haggy Mob and then bring in that package in a very slow matchup where we think we're going to need Haunting Voyage as kind of a, a late game effect. And at that point, Raider can go too. And then we've made a whole bunch of cuts at once. And then in matchups where things are going to go super late, we can bring in our Haunting Voyage, we can bring in our... Uh, raise the Draugr and maybe cut some of the weaker early cards, like maybe Warmaster is not very impactful, or we maybe don't care too much about... Uh, God of Winter is probably still pretty good, especially with Instance. That's also worth pointing out. If we can float mana and then untap our lands with Yorn, then casting a Squash at instant speed or a Feed the Serpent at instant speed becomes much easier. Uh, Doomscar Titan, probably still okay, because it has Fortel. I think I like Vandal main deck, just because there's going to be that many or so many of these equipment running around, that it's pretty high value. 
Plus it also enables squash for two. So how many more cuts do I need to make? Three, four, five, six, seven. So this this would be 17 lands, 23 spells. This would be the deck. And then I would have to sort out the mana base. Or we could play 18 lands, which I'm not opposed to, but we also have Sculptor of Winter, which is kind of like a mana source. And we have Horizon Seeker that searches lands, Yorn to untap them. Question here is, is it worth it to somehow sneak blue and black mana into the deck for the artifact half of God of Winter? And given that we don't have any blue-black dual lands or other mana fixers, probably not. But yeah, let's say we had some blue-black dual lands or some other sources of mana fixing you could consider it because we do have a few snow creatures especially getting back priest over and over could be quite strong so yeah 17 lands is probably okay here and then how many black sources do we have one two three four i would probably want around seven or eight at least so let's say three swamps basic lands two three so one two three four five six seven swamps then green i would want don't need a ton of double green but we do want it early so let's see we've got one two three four five green sources let's say we go up to seven leaving five red sources which would give me one two seven red sources so we've got about seven of each color so not quite a devil's mana base but pretty close to it seems reasonable don't hate the look of this again usually want to stick to two colors and a splash unless you've got a lot of mana fixing but because we had all these dual lands i think this is acceptable and uh Packmate also draws a card early, so it can also help us smooth out our draws a bit. And the fact that we have a lot of tap lands isn't too bad since we don't have any one drops we need to cast. So yeah, I think this would be my take, but keep in mind, whenever you're playing Seal, especially if you're playing sideboarded games, always keep in mind a sideboard plan. We did see all those disdainful strokes in the sideboard, so it could easily happen that you want to sideboard into a blue deck if disdainful stroke lines up particularly nicely in the matchup. Now, in this case, it's kind of difficult to pivot into blue because we're kind of attached to all the dual lands, but sideboarding and sealed should not be underestimated. So let's say we had a, a sealed pool that's a little bit more normal, where we don't need to be pulled into junt because of the mana base, then I could easily see in some sideboarded games where you want to take out one of your primary colors, swap into blue, you get access to as many disdainful strokes as your heart desires and then we pick up mistwalker double augury raven behold a multiverse so get some other good blue support cards and that maybe is a, a color that lines up better in the matchup than one of your other primary colors even though it's not the way you originally built the deck so those are all things to keep in mind and then as we mentioned if the matchup is particularly grindy, we can always bring in some Graveyard Recursion and maybe bring in some extra Berserkers. If we do bring in cards out of the sideboard, always double check the mana base because sometimes you bring in two or three black cards and take out a few, let's say, red cards, then you might want to adjust your basic land count as well. So that's also important. So even though sealed, some people say it's just luck of the draw and people that open broken bombs are going to win more often. There's definitely some truth behind that, but at the same time, there's also a lot of thinking involved when sideboarding and building the deck. So still a pretty high skill uh, format. Don't know if anyone in chat built a sealed deck in the meantime, and maybe we can do one quick game here just to see how the deck plays out. All right, we'll be on the play. Although there is something to be said to be on the draw and sealed sometimes if the opponent is particularly uh, slow. In this case, 
Sadly, we're seeing kind of the effects of not having best of one hand smoothing. Gonna have to take them all. <laughs> it looks like we're playing a completely different deck now. Uh, sure, I'll keep this. So I can bottom giants, or I can bottom priests, since we don't have any snow lands to go with it. I'll be greedy. Yeah, we went from a, a three-color snow deck to red-black aggro. So this could be the fight spell, could be deal five to tapped creature, could be a pack mate. Ah, that's too bad. All right, perfect. So now we can feed the serpents. Can almost waking the trolls. Or helm. Trolls here on the green source would be pretty nice. So this could be the fight spell killing the 4-4. Four four. Alright, that's fine. So now what we can eventually do is maybe move the equipment to the firewalker so it doesn't kill the zombie. Yeah, this seems fine. Doomscar wouldn't be able to attack here. Although, let's see. If the plan is to eventually move the equipment, I would probably have to do it now if next turn I want to wake the trolls. So I could attack, move to the Firewalker. This goes to two. We would be taking quite a bit of damage from Guardian in the meantime, though. So I'm not sure if that's worth it. But yeah, assuming next turn I want to wake the trolls, then I would lose my zombie to the Fall of the Imposter. It's definitely an interesting spot. I would save a zombie token. I don't think I'm going to care about the zombie token, actually. Because we have so many threats coming up. And then we'll just wake the trolls next turn, I think. Nice hide. Sure. Could also go with Cinderheart, but then we'd have to exile it, which doesn't trigger the ability. So this might be the deal 5 to tapped creature. So I can go Warmaster plus Titan, or I can Giants. Kind of like the Warmaster plus Titan play. Yeah, I could have considered, I guess, on upkeep putting a stop or main phase to then activate Slumber Mount to then get back with Waking the Trolls. Yeah, that could have been reasonable. Although it looks like we're in pretty good shape here, regardless, so don't think it matters. This is probably gonna die. 
I guess I could have equipped it, but I kind of want to just play giant here. Yep. Maybe I should have played around Doomscar. Although I probably would have gotten foretold earlier. So green-white doesn't seem like a matchup where I'm gonna need to bring in the Haunting Voyage package. And I don't think there's really a reason to sideboard into the blue deck either. So we're just looking at maybe making a small couple adjustments. Uh, provoke the Trolls maybe lines up better than Feed the Serpent for instance. Or Squash. Uh, but I think I'm reasonably happy with our setup. Don't think I need Wither Crown. Uh, at the same time, we got to think, like, how could our opponent sideboard? In green-white, they might bring in some uh, disenchant effects for our saga, which would also hit our equipments. But it's not like we have a way to really mitigate that. So, yeah, I think we just go again without any changes. Haggy mob. Didn't see a ton of Want Toughness creatures necessarily. We could bring in our own Disenchant for the Bounding Gold, but we already have a, a Vandal main deck. Although we could bring in a Broken Wings because it also hits the Flying Creature. So that's like a maybe consideration here. But I think we'll be fine. This is a Mulligan. And this is a Keep. So Priest looks good, probably bottoming Vandal, although Vandal can enable Squash. Mm. I'm definitely going to keep Trolls because that's kind of our win condition here. Although we do have a, lo a lot of other win conditions in the deck too. This is close, I think I'm still bottoming Vandal. Although Vandal is also good with Priests because it's going to put something in the graveyard. So maybe it is Trolls anyway. And then just hope to draw more expensive cards later. Sure. Probably start with Chasm. Turn to Priest. Got a lot of snow lands. So now I'm kind of sad I don't have Awaking the Trolls anymore. But we can always activate Slumber Mound eventually. Ooh, God of Winter. Sure. So Priest could kill Valkyrie. That seems acceptable. Uh, let's see, I get to untap two lands, so three, four, five. Yeah, we're not probably not doing anything else here. Could also float mana to then squash. Uh, instead, and then keep Priest around. Maybe that's not the worst idea, because it uses up all my mana. So... And then I get to play Slumber Mound. Three, four, five. Yeah, let's do that. So, full control. I need to attack, and in response to the trigger... Tap my lands. Resolves. Squash. And then hit for three. And then play Slumber Mound. And then next turn, if I play Forests, if I untap all my lands, I might be able to activate Slumber Mound. I'm 
All right. So let's double check here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, including double green. And then what land do we destroy? Probably the Sulphur's Mire here. Could just be a colorless snow land in the deck, but might be a splash color. So full control, no need to kill Vandal. Trigger, green, green, red, untap three, slumber mound. Bounding Golds, can Mass Vandal, and a Lindworm. So, I can use Priest to kill Mast Vandal, play my own Mass Vandal, hit for 7, seems good. There's no way for me to play Lindworm this turn. Could be a Snakeskin Veil. Kaya's Onslaught, Mammoth Growth. Alright. Fair enough. Can still attack. Probably should have used my Snow Lance here, but that's fine. No untapped shenanigans this time. So now I just need to dodge Doomscar, I guess. Alright, GG's. So yeah, our Slumber Mound and Yorn combo putting in some nice work. Alright, I'm glad we got to showcase the deck in action at least. So again, if you want to practice sealed, there's a lot of ways to do it. But getting together with a friend, especially if you've got a few of the call time cards unlocked on your arena account, and then importing the deck from an external website is one way to do it. Or of course you can just play in the sealed events and that will get the job done too. So yeah, I think that's gonna just about wrap up the stream for today. Wanna thank everyone for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.